Hello everyone, I am the Man at Kirby, and welcome to my channel, The Commander Timer. The Commander Timer is a channel dedicated to my favorite Magic the Gathering format. The Brewery is a series on this channel showcasing my spicy brews under the deck text. On this episode of The Brewery, I'll be discussing my take on Coma Cosmo Serpent. If you like this deck or any of the cards I'll be mentioning throughout the video, please consider using my TCG Player affiliate link when purchasing those cards. You can find that link down in the description. It'll really help out the channel. The best way you can help support the channel is with my Patreon. For just $1, patrons get early access to certain videos on YouTube. In fact, patrons got a chance to see this video earlier. You can also support my channel for free by simply liking, subscribing, and sharing, which also helps out a lot. You can join my Discord server for free if you want to join the Commander Tavern community. All pertinent links are down in the description. Alright, let's get back to the episode. Coma is a 6-6 six, six serpent that can't be countered for 3 generic, 2 green, and 2 blue. If being uncounterable weren't enough, Coma has built-in indestructibility at the cost of sacrificing a serpent. And that's it. Sacrifice a serpent at instant speed and make it indestructible. That might seem like something not as trivial if not for the fact that Coma has a triggered ability that creates a serpent each upkeep called Coma's Coil. That's right, that's 4 Coma's Coil each turn around the table in a 4-player commander game. So you can at least make Coma indestructible once per turn, making the window with which to destroy Coma very narrow. This helps make Coma not need as much protection since it can't be countered and it can't be destroyed. It does cost a whopping 7 mana to cast though, but even if it is dealt with, the deck being half green means having access to all the best mana acceleration, making casting it the first couple of times in a game not that daunting. If that weren't enough, its activated ability has a second option where you can sacrifice a serpent to tap down a permanent. On top of that, that permanent can't be activated that turn. In other words, if you activate Coma during an opponent's upkeep targeting a Planeswalker, that player would not be able to activate it that turn, or target any other permanent that has an ability that can only be used at sorcery speed. That might seem a bit niche, but tapping down permanents can be quite harrowing, especially if you're amassing a ton of Coma's Coil tokens. You could even be mean and lock an opponent out of the game by tapping down all of their lands during their upkeep. However, while that level of spite isn't what I aspire with the deck, taking advantage of Coma's activated ability tapping down things is definitely one of them. Coma is a swift army knife in the command zone, but tapping down option is what's at the heart of my build. Junk Winder is another way to double down on that effect each time Coma creates a Coma's Coil. This helps us tap down an opponent's non-land permanent without having to sacrifice a Serpent token. Better yet is that it's frozen, meaning that it won't tap during its controller's untap step. As a bonus, Junk Winder is itself a Serpent. Definitely one of the better cards in the deck. Verde Circle helps us take advantage of when we're tapping down creatures, which is the permanent this deck cares about most tapping down. Even if we don't have Junk Winder, Verde Circle essentially has us draw a card whenever we sacrifice a Serpent Tacoma if we tap down a creature. This card does some work. It also functions as a mana sink if we have nothing better to do, tapping down a potential attacker or blocker for 5 mana. Season of Growth and Kindred Discovery also help out with card advantage. Granted, the former only has a scry one, but we can at least filter our top deck. Kindred Discovery is just busted here. Obviously, we pick Serpent as a creature type, when we're essentially drawing a card each upkeep. Not only that, but if we attack with Coma and a bunch of its coils, we draw a card for each of those Serpents that's attacking. Super busted. Going back to tapping down creatures for value, Willbreaker and the Smiths into Dream take further advantage of tapping down creatures by just straight up getting rid of them. At the cost of sacrificing a Coma's Coil, we can either steal a creature with Willbreaker or have an opponent sacrifice it with the Smiths into Dream. This also helps bypass opponent's own indestructible creatures since they're either stolen or have to be sacrificed, both effects that bypass indestructibility. However, if they had other ways of preventing us to target them, Shadow Spear, Detection Tower, and Arcane Lighthouse get the job done. The lands don't even take up slots in the deck, so their inclusion should be a given. Shadow Spear, on the other hand, is just a busted equipment. Its activated ability can be used even if not equipped to a creature. However, equipped to Coma, it gives it plus one plus one, trample, and lifelink. This alone helps Coma become a three turn clock since we can tap down blockers. Even if they did have blockers, we're gaining a ton of life and it has trample. Urza Saga is included because it's a guaranteed way of getting that Shadow Spear. However, it can still be used to get some Mana Rocks in case you already have the Spear or need to cast Coma for some reason, getting Soul Ring, Mana Vault, Jewel Lotus, etc. But we'll see those cards near the end of the video. However, Wolf Slayer is one of the best ways to use Coma's ability. While we can potentially control the board tapping down the worst offenders, we can always just make Coma indestructible in response to Wolf Slayer's trigger, making it and Coma the last permanent standing. After that, it's pretty much game over. However, as busted as 4 Coma's Coils each turn around the table may be, even to the untrained eye you might comment that it won't be enough to police the table, especially since you have to sacrifice one each time to Coma to do so. Even having Junk Diver in play might not be that efficient, and you wouldn't be wrong. So how would we go about maximizing Coma's Coma's Coil production even further? 
Adrix and Neve Tomb Casters, Doubling Season, Primal Vigor, and Parallel Lives are no-brainers here since they double the amount of coil tokens Koma's creating each upkeep. Obviously, it becomes even more disgusting having multiples of these out, with all four on the battlefield equating to 16 Koma's coils each upkeep, but that's just magical Christmas land. Well, maybe not so much so, since the deck is half blue and can draw super deep into the library. Anyways, at the very least, doubling our Serpent output is still good for our main plan. Illusionist Bracers, Ring of Brighthearth, Lithoform Engine, and Stranic Resonator help us literally double Koma's activated ability by itself. Unfortunately, Lithoform Engine and Stranic Resonator need to be tapped to use, so you can only use them once around the board. The odd one out is the Resonator since it doesn't copy Koma's activated ability. It copies its triggered ability, which is fine because it still gets us another Serpent that we can sacrifice to pay for Koma's ability, so it's technically copying it, even if it's in a roundabout way. Lithoform Engine can also be used to copy triggered abilities like the Resonator, but it can also copy instants, sorceries, and permanent spells, so keep that in mind too. It's incredibly versatile. Yet the best of these is the Bracers though, since it does it for free and automatically. The rings don't tap but they do cost 2 generic each time, but the Bracers give us double tapping for free per Serpent sacrifice to Koma. Definitely worth including in every Koma deck. Hum of the Hose, Spark Double, Sakashima of a Thousand Faces, and Sakashima the Imposter one up these cards all together just by just copying Koma itself. Why jump through hoops to copy an ability when you can just copy the source? The previously mentioned doubling effects like Adrix and Eve and the enchantments might double the tokens we're creating, but having multiples of Koma itself is another way to multiply how many Koma's coils tokens we get each upkeep. If that weren't enough, Hum of the Host gives us another Koma each combat step during our turn, giving us more Serpents each turn. Serpents that can be sacrificed to another serpent to make them indestructible or to create an indestructible army of 6-6s. Combine the helm with the previously mentioned token doubling effects and you can take over the entire board quite quickly. Man do I love math. In fact, an amazing math exercise is equipping helm of the host to Abex and Neve. In the first combat step, you get 2 copies of the twins because the original doubles tokens. In the next combat step, the helm creates 8 copies of the twins since you have 3 doubling effects in play. The next combat step gets you a whopping 2048 additional copies of the twins since you have 11 doubling effects in play. That's just insane. Assuming of course that you can protect your board state for that amount of turns. But hey, it's not like the deck is blue or anything, right? In any case, the amount of Adrix and Neve copies you'll have on the battlefield follows the following generating formula for any fellow mathematicians or math aficionados in the audience. Obviously, this number becomes more insane with each more token doublers in play, but that's a topic for another video. Back to doubling Coma's triggers, Sphinx of the Second Sun and Paradox Haste double the source of Coma's trigger, which is the upkeep step. The enchantment gives us two back-to-back -back upkeeps at the beginning of our turn, giving us two Coma's coils during our turn. However, if you had both the enchantment and the Sphinx, it does not give us a second upkeep during that second beginning step, since we already had a first upkeep, which is when Paradox Haze triggers. As for the Sphinx, it is very important that you keep in mind that it does not give you a second beginning step after your post-combat main phase. It effectively replaces that second main phase. So make sure you cast all of your sorceries, play lands, etc. before combat if you have the Sphinx out. Which is fine since most of our tricks are done during our opponent's turns anyways. As for further maximizing Koma's ability, Maxwood Nexus, Arcane Adaptation, and Xenograft can turn all of our creatures into serpents, which is amazing in a pinch. The deck doesn't have too many creatures, but being able to sacrifice any of them to Koma is something, something your opponent doesn't expect. As a bonus, the Nexus can create a changeling which is even better when you're really in a pinch. Having so many serpents on the battlefield isn't just to fuel Koma. We can also use them offensively since they don't need to be untapped to sacrifice to Koma. Coat of Arms is just brutal here, assuming you're not playing against other tribal decks. With the amount of Serpents we can create, this makes a huge and threatening board price very easily, even if it's just 4 Koma's coils we're creating per turn around the table. That makes Koma a 10-10 while also making our 3-3 coils actually 7-7. 31 power on the board is nothing to scoff at. Spawning Kraken takes this a step further by making all of our Serpents create 9-9 Krakens when they manage to get through. Each 3-3 that gets through makes a 9-9 that can then also make another 9-9 if it gets through. This combined with Coat of Arms or our Token Doublers is insane. If they're all Serpents as well, then it's even more fuel for Koma. Eldrazi Monument further fuels our beatdown synergy by making our entire army indestructible and flyer. Sure, we don't really need to worry about Koma, but each upkeep we're creating fodder for the monument which makes it worth including. Especially since it also gives Koma plus one plus one and flying, making it a three turn clock with evasion all on its own. Imagine making all of our other serpents fly to go over defenses and hit opponents making more 9-9s with spawning Kraken. This deck has tons of synergy. 
The following cards in the deck are the essential card advantages, responses, and mana acceleration of any deck. Let's start off with drawing cards with Pull From Tomorrow, Stroke of Genius, Blue Sun Zenith, Commander's Insight, Diviner's Portent, and Drawn on Dreams. This is a nice suite of draw spells since they're all instants that can draw us X cards. Further along, we'll see how the deck turns our Serpent tokens into mana, which really helps fuel these spells and draw into a fat hand. Same with Collective Unconscious and Shamanic Revelation. This deck can churn out so many creature tokens that these spells are just epic. The amount of cards we can draw for just 6 or 5 mana is way more than 1 per mana. With Shamanic Revelation, if all of our Comus Coils are pumped by just one more, we gain 4 times that amount of life too for quite the bonus. Thought Vessel and Reliquary Tower are included due to how many cards this deck draws. Not just from these draw spells, but the previously seen draw engines too, like Kindred Discovery and Verity Circle. Interaction is one of the main reasons we want to keep a fat hand. Swan Song, Pact of Negation, Negate, Counterspell, and Mana Drain is a deck's suite of counter magic, and it doesn't really need much more than this. Keep in mind that Coma is uncounterable and can be made indestructible fairly easily. And even if it does bite the dust, we should be more than able to recast it again. But these are more for preventing opponents to combo off for the win, or to protect our board state when it becomes threatening. Heroic Intervention also helps protect our board state from a well-timed board wipe. Even if we can make our creatures indestructible, we have plenty of other epic permanents that we'd like to keep around. Swiftfoot Boots and Champion's Helm are the only two protect equipment in the deck. That's because Coma can't be sacrificed to its own ability. So having an aura like Darkseal Mutation, Imprisoned in the Moon, Song of the Dryads, etc. hit Coma can be quite the bummer. However, these also help with protecting some of our own creatures like Adrex and Neve, etc. Eternal Witness and Balaged Recovery help us recover anything that does go through the cracks. The best thing about the Balaged Recovery is that it doesn't take up a slot in the deck because its backside is a land. It does enter tapped, but at least it provides green mana when tapped. Cyclonic Rift is included because there is no reason not to. If we're facing against some stacks or pillow fort decks, we need to get rid of everything at once. This does just that, as well as getting rid of all creatures to help get that game ending Alpha Strike through. As for mana acceleration, Growing Rights of Illamog is a given. As is, it can help us dig through the top power cards of our library for any key creature we need like a clone, mana dork, etc. But then with just one turn around the table, we're able to transform it into Illamog Cradle of the Sun and really generate a ton of mana. The kind of mana that can be sunk into an epic X draw spell to set us up for the eventual win. This land does some work here, however the best thing about it is preventing you from needing a Gaia's Cradle. To hell with the reserve list. Anywho, Circle of Dreams Druid does something similar, being a Gratis Cradle on the Bidal after all. This elf does some serious work. This will almost always tap down for a ton of mana once we get going. Ashnet's Altar and Phyrexian Altar are also used to turn our creatures into gas. Coma is quite chunky to recast, but even then we can help use those coil tokens to help fuel our spells. These artifacts might be aristocrat staples, but they do a ton of work here. Birds of Paradise, Llanowar Elves, Finhorn Elves, and Elvish Mystic are the deck's other mana dorks. Getting early mana dorks help out in getting that fat coma out. And then once out, if we manage to make them into serpents, we can help fuel other engines. Arbor Elf, the last mana dork, can not only untap a basic forest and dual type forest to be like its other one drop mana brethren, but thanks to Yamamaya Cradle of Growth being in the deck, it could be used to untap any land we control, even an opponent's land if you're being generous, but realistically for untapping things like Ancient Tomb, Temple of the False God, and Nykthos Shrine to Nyx. Temple of the False God might seem a bit slow here, but our commander costs a whopping 7 mana to cast in the first place. So even if it's our 5th land in play, that's enough to help us cast Coma on turn 5. So don't doubt the power of it here. Speaking of lands, Farseek, Nature's Lore, and 3 Visits are included. Forever my favorite 2 cost land type ramp trifecta, these cards are going to be even better once WotC decides to complete all those dual type land mega cycles that have yet to be complete. Really WotC, Commander is the most popular format, but its mana bases are still lopsided. Get to it. Anywho, Jewel Lotus, Soul Ring, Mana Vault, Simic Signet, and Talisman of Curiosity are the deck's mana rocks. Yes, the deck is green, so land based mana ramp and mana dorks are better, but it's always good to diversify your mana base whenever possible. Dorks survive Vandal Blast, but these survive Wraths. The rest of the deck is just the rest of the lands. The deck's running all 7 fetch lands, Tropical Island, Breeding Pool, Rhinewood Falls, Hinderland Harbor, Rejuvenating Springs, Flooded Grove, Dreamroot Cascade, Yavamaya Coast, and Command Tower, as well as 5 of each basic land. As with all my deck techs, you don't need the more expensive mana pieces like Ancient Tomb, Jeweled Lotus, Mana Vault, and Tropical Island. You can swap them out for budget substitutes and the deck will still run just fine. This brew is just an idea of how to build around Coma Cosmo Serpent. I built this deck making the most out of all of Coma's abilities, even if the one I'm making the most of is its tapping ability. What's the point of tapping down all blockers or getting rid of them with the ability if we're not swinging in for the kill? Yes, it can be used to control the board, but no one wants to sit through a game and do nothing. So if you're going to freeze everything down, at least put your opponents out of their misery relatively quickly. At least you'll be doing it in style thanks to all the math in the deck. If you're interested in the decklist of this spicy brew of mine, you can find a link to it down in the description. 
I would like to thank all my patrons for supporting me and a quick shout out to all my higher tier patrons, the brewers, for their patronage. I'd also like to thank anyone using my TCG Player affiliate link. That also helps out the channel. And to everyone, thanks for watching this episode of The Brewery on the Commander Tavern. I'm Vendor Kirby and happy brewing. <laughs>